Uh, dear friends, uh, particularly you uh, ladies, we are on the last chapter of uh, cancer of the cervix. We, we saw there were five chapters where we saw the definition, the causes, uh, sign and symptoms, the complications. Let's see the treatment modalities. Let's see the treatment modalities and uh, I'm encouraging you to really take this very serious. If you find this uh, presentation useful, you share. The aim is to help and help each other. So if you don't mind, you are not uh, satisfied with what the content is, please go and do investigation. Study more about this um, cancer of the cervix. Do your research. Ask doctors. Ask people who pass through the same, the, the, this condition. Uh, go to internet to do your research and see the, the impact, the negative impact it has. And check what should you do as an individual. As we are starting now the chapter on the treatment, let's see in a few, few slides again what we can do to help each other to understand this condition much better especially when we talk about treatment. To understand uh, how to treat, you understand the cause. To solve a problem, you need to understand it. So we saw part one, two, three, four. So I'm encouraging you to check those previous parts so that you understand how the treatment is going to be applied because they are linked. They are linked. You see the pap smear that we spoke about, uh, they check uh, they check the cells. If they find some abnormal cells, then they will um, start treating accordingly, according to the stage they found. So what will happen is they will check uh, any woman who is above 21 years. They will be asked, as long as you have been sexually active, to do pap smear. It's a, it's, it's a advice. It actually should be um, a duty Everyone should do it without being asked. 21 years and above, you have been sexually active, please do your pap smear. Very, very important. If the pap smear result is normal, you can repeat within three years. Unless you have like a chronic condition where you can even repeat it in, a, in a, every year. But if you find like there is a, or cells that are suspicious, you don't wait, you can repeat it within six months. For ladies who are above 70, you don't need to repeat your pap smear if in the past 10 years, the pap smear has been normal. You do it, it is normal, you do it again, it's normal, then after 70, you are done. You don't need to repeat it. Uh, those who are below, you understand that it is indicated you need to do it, okay? Then women who are not sexually active and they are below 21 years, no need to do anything. You see, you are a virgin. There is no, um, there was no sexual intercourse. It, you, it's likely that you don't have any contact with uh, HPV, human papilloma virus, the one we saw in the causes and the predisposing factors. So these are the things that are very important to consider. And if uh, you had done hysterectomy, maybe you had a fibroid or you had a, a bleeding uterus from uterus non-stop and they just decide to remove uterus. Maybe you have uh, completed your, 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 your pregnancies. Then you say, I'm having a problem of bleeding. Then they remove uterus. If it is total, and it was removed not because of the cancer, then you don't need to repeat pap smear. You are done. However, if it was removed because of cancer, still the vault, the, the remaining part on the vagina should be checked as well to see if the cells are still normal or if they are abnormal. It's very important to know that and follow the guideline. However, if the hysterectomy was what you call subtotal, because there are times where they don't remove the whole uterus, depending on the indication, 
So you still need to do your pap smear. You need to do it and follow the guideline that you are given. If it was uh, because of uh, HPV, that infection, okay, or there was a malignancy before, hmm, or there is the immuno, immunodepression, maybe due to organ transplant or steroids, the medication that causes the immune, immune system to go down, or exposure to other asbestos, uh, the, 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 the tear steel, the straw, like uh, chemicals that are very strong, that can expose you to develop a low immunity or HIV mm, or other conditions that can lower immunity. Here I can uh, insist HIV that is well treated. You have been adherent to your treatment. Your immune system is okay. So you are not really um, among people who have low immunity because the indicator will be seen by how much CD4 count you have how your virological goal is, how your immunological goal is, epidemiological, are you fine? Are you getting better? Are you able to go to work? Hmm? But if you are very sick, then it means you are at high risk of what? Developing this cancer as well because of immunodepression, you know? So if you have not been uh, screened before, it's very important to screen as well. I hope it is clear. I hope it is clear. And I hope uh, it is not too fast that we can miss the understanding of this. But however, whenever we get a question, questions, let's discuss. What I cannot ans answer, I can ask my colleagues, my senior colleagues who can help. So uh, there is a very interesting development that is being uh, introduced in many countries. The vaccination on this virus called HPV. They give this vaccine. Uh, we have uh, two which are uh, quietly utilized, used. Uh, the most, the one that I saw is uh, uh, seen in many places, Gardezil, and uh, there is the Cervarix. But uh, these ones, they are the most used in preventing this uh, cancer of the cervix. It is mainly distributed to the teenagers. The teenagers before they reach the stage where they can start contracting those uh, human papilloma virus. This one, human papilloma virus. We remember, we are still focusing on the cervix, where the challenge is, where the problem starts. So if they find a problem, they do what to call cone biopsy. It's one of the treatment modalities. After they have done your pap smear, they find there is a problem on the cervix, then they can decide to chop all this part that is not well. They remove it this way. And as they are removing it, they send it to the laboratory to study. Is this part sick? The remaining part it will heal well. It will heal uh, without having a bad scars. It will heal without any problem. And uh, they need to keep on checking again. If the cells that, that they have found before are still there, or not. So that's the usefulness of this uh, uh, treatment and the diagnostic procedure. So it is done for two uh, reasons. One is to remove the sick cells. Another one is for uh, doing more investigation and going to study. You see, as they are doing colposcopy, put a machine, they put a light there on the vagina. The light will go through to the cervix. They will be able to see which part to remove if they have to decide what the colposcopy biopsy to remove that part so those are the different ways of approaching it and this uh, graph which summarizes everything this image is summarizing everything after you do your screening with papa uh, papa nicolau test or pap smear you can also do liquid based cytology where they take a specific um a liquid acetic acid, they put it on the cervix. They observe if there are changes, which would point to the possibility of uh, cancer cells. And they, will, they can also test the presence of the HPV, human papilloma virus. Then if they find anything positive, they can do colposcopy biopsy, the one we just saw now on this slide. They cut and remove it 
then eventually they will go and test it. If they find it is a CRN1, it is just the early stage. It is, no, you don't need a treatment because the cells are not bad yet. You just need to repeat your pap smear without taking too long time. So if they, they are they at, at stage two, stage two, then they can burn, they can burn those cells. You know, if now the cancer has started, then they need to do more investigations. They need to do more investigation that how they start doing CT scan, they start doing a, a cystoscopy, they look in the in the in the bladder, if there are no cells, they can do MRI for checking the staging at which stage it has gone. So at this stage, you need to start treatment. You need to be aggressive uh, and start, you know, initiating a treatment. So what are the treatments now? The treatments that can be used at any stage, you can do what we call hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is just to come, you see, you will sell here, you see the cells here, you can already say, let's cut the whole uterus. Let's remove it. You cut from here, okay, the upper part of the vagina. Then you cut. Sometimes you can re you leave the fallopian tubes and uh, and ovaries inside. If they are fine, if they don't have a problem, then you remove uterus. But now, if it has very much advanced, in addition to hysterectomy, if it is getting advanced, it is attacking other organs and parameters. They have to add what to call radiotherapy. You've heard about radiotherapy and uh, where they have to go to burn, to burn the cells which are sick. Hmm? Whether here on the previous uh, stage, they do what we call lymph uh, lymphadenectomy. Remember, we saw that the, the lymph nodes are the ones which will attract those cells and which uh, would also spread through the lymphatic system to go to spread to spread to other places. I think we saw it in the previous uh, presentations. So then on all of them, they can add chemotherapy, which are cells which are responsible to go and burn those cells which are abnormal. So the, 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 the medication has affinity with the, the cells which are abnormal. It will go and burn them. So now the problem lies, lies where the cells have gone far. The cells are in the intestine, the cells are in the lungs. So you can't cut, you can't burn because it is all over the body. You know, you do what you can, but it's palliative because it is already advanced. You find it on the late, late stage when um, the treatment is becoming difficult. That's why they call it palliative. They give chemotherapy with other medication which are responsible to destroy um, the, the virus, the, the cancer cells. So when we talk about hysterectomy, this is what we are referring to. Hysterectomy, there are different types. They're like the one which they can just cut the uterus and they cut from the vagina and they are leaving the tubes and the ovaries inside. This is very uh, helpful because it will keep also the ovaries inside, keep on secreting hormones. But if they see that the cancer has invaded all these parameters, you know, it has invaded the vagina, it has invaded the ovaries, all parts, then they need to do everything should be removed. Total hysterectomy with the, the ferropian, the, the parameters next to it. There are other modalities where they can, uh, if the other side is still normal, they can leave one side, one ovary. If this one is sick, they will take it out. That's why we call it hysterectomy with salpingo or ophorectomy. Salpingo is a salpinx, which is a salp, sal, sal, uh, the, the fallopian tube. And uh, ophorectomy is an ovary. The ovary is ophore, ophorectomy. They are cutting with the ovary. So in short, this is a presentation that we have. Here they are just showing the approach. They can uh, uh, cut by transverse line or they can do midline or vertical incision. I hope we got uh, the basics and the foundation which you can use to go and uh, study more on your own if you want. So this is just another slide showing the distribution. If you are trying to go to burn, to burn the, 
the cells where you know when they are getting spread in the pelvis in the uh, lymph nodes or if they want to do surgery where they have to remove them when they are talking about metastasis distribution of pelvic lymph node metastasis you can see that in the pelvis will have a huge percentage so uh, prevention is always better than cure friends the aim of this uh, presentation is for prevention so i hope i hope we have the same understanding and i hope everyone is going to try the best possible to help someone if you're a health professional again i ask you to take part into helping other people if you are just ordinary citizen you have not you don't have much knowledge in medicine share the message just push it send it to a to, a, to another to a lady so that uh, you can help and it is for everyone it's not for sick people it's for people who have not yet done this test who don't have enough information about this thank you so much for uh, being on board thank you for accepting to come to fight these diseases that are uh, delaying africans to develop thank you so much we'll meet again next time for other topics